Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. April 23rd, 2024. Let's get into it. A couple quick things I wanted to point out to you. And Fox News is probably the most guilty of everything. Is you keep hearing about the hush money case, the hush money case. It's a non-disclosure agreement case, which is no case. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not even against the law. Let me, let me ask you this. If you've worked for the federal government or if you've worked for a corporation, how many non-disclosure agreements have you signed? You. All right, come on in. How many non-disclosure agreements have you signed? Probably quite a few. It's not against the law to get somebody to do a non-disclosure. Now, does that mean that Trump was with Stormy Daniels? Hell no. Could just mean he just wanted her to, to, to not say anything, maybe to preserve his marriage for whatever reason. Now, did Trump pay the money? No, his lawyer paid the money. <laughs> and supposedly Trump didn't even know about it. This whole thing taking place is at the behest of the Democrats. I mean, if it was, Joe Biden, who I dislike to the extreme, okay, if he was on trial for a non-disclosure agreement, I'd say that was wrong. It's just flat out wrong. It's not a hush money case. It's a non-disclosure agreement, which is perfectly legit. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing is, is you know, I hate to say it. I, I'm actually for the students who are... Uh, protesting against Israel. Oh, if you listen to Clay, Clay and Buck, Travis, you know, on the, on the radio, or Sean Hannity, or uh, Todd Stearns, you're anti-Semitic. Oh, you hate the Jews if you are for the uh, Palestinians in any way, shape, or fashion. You do realize that right now they're excavating a mass grave of 400 dead children women and Palestinians in Gaza right now that the by the way many of them had their hands tied behind their back okay how do you think those people died execution style execution style so don't tell me you know these people protesting against Israel okay you're not anti-semitic you're anti-war you're anti-genocide you're anti Israel and I understand that and I'm not talking about Jews. I'm talking about Zionist. There's a difference. Look it up people Look up what a Zionist is versus a Jew Two entirely different categories and what's taking place in Gaza with 13,000 dead kids How how in the hell are Democrats for that and a few Republicans? Okay, how are you for? killing 13,000 kids what is wrong with people? The other thing I wanted to get on was the, the bill that just passed. $61 billion. Do, what in the hell? Is it invasion of the body snatchers or something? Something's gone wrong. Everybody that has been elected, except Marjorie Taylor Greene and a uh, couple of others, you know, that voted against the bill. Why are we giving $61 billion? to Ukraine. Now I understand most of that money is just going to get spent here in the United States for the, mili the military industrial complex, which will go back to the pockets of the politicians. But you're spending money you don't have. You're 35 trillion dollars in debt. I mean, are these people just lunatics? Do they, do they have any common sense whatsoever? You know, once their gravy train dries up and the dollar is worthless and we got hyperinflation, they're going to get hurt well, more than you and I, because I bet a lot of their money is in dollars rather than gold and silver. So let's change the topic to silver. All right, so right now gold's hovering around $2,400 an ounce. Now, if you bought it, oh, 20 years ago, I want to say, well, I think it was about 800. Platinum was selling for about 400. Platinum's now 1,000. Uh, silver really hasn't gone up that much. It was $14 last, let's see, I think, no, I, was, I bought it for $4 back in 2000. So now it's at 28, about $28. Still a good deal. And at SD bullion right now, 
they're running a sale 249 over spot for botanicas uh, get a sleeve of 25 okay it's still a lot of money i mean i'm not gonna say you know but you know get it while you can silver's running out man every one of these missiles that blow up in ukraine that russia shoots or that the uh, uh the high mars they got silver in them that's silver that will never ever come back on the market and the silver mines they're not producing uh, a lot of them have gone out of business because of the, the the suppressed price of silver look at india india is buying up silver like crazy so is china of course they're buying up gold too <laughs> i mean don't don't get me wrong i i think the dollar's days are numbered uh, do you i mean if you're not stocking up on some sort of asset whether it be real estate or well, I, I wouldn't invest in real estate right now. That whole market's going to come crashing down. I just wonder what's going to happen here in Florida because everywhere I look, and I live in the Ocala area here, I mean, or Marion County, it's uh, there's nothing but construction everywhere. I mean, you you can't you can't go out the door and not see a, a, a crane or a, a bulldozer. Or, you know, it's just insane. I, I guess the whole damn world is moving to Florida. Well, and I can't blame them. I mean, DeSantis is doing one hell of a good job. I mean, you know, he just passed a, a law, and I think this is a good idea, that the schools have to teach their students what communism is, okay? And uh, I think that's a good idea, you know, because the communists, under Stalin, I, I can't remember how many millions he killed. Of course, then you had the, uh, the Nazis. They killed a hell of a lot. But I mean, so many people in the last century, uh, the 20th century, died because of communism. And, and it's not even taught in the colleges. I don't, I don't think those students even know. So that's why, you know, they, they're Marxist. They want communism. They think it's a good idea. It, I mean, in the purest sense, you know, everybody's sharing equally. You, you think, well, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. It don't work out that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you know, some people work hard. And they're going to profit and they're going to do better than other people you can't rob peter to pay piper okay so if i'm working hard and i'm out there doing what i got to do to become rich you know let's say i what became a millionaire which would be nice uh i'm not gonna if you take the money from me and give it to the guy that's just sitting on his porch drinking beer and smoking cigarettes and doesn't want to work for a living that's uh I, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, well, you know, it ain't worth getting out here and working hard and doing things to help the world or whatever. I think I'm gonna join this guy, smoke cigarettes and drink beer and rob the next rich guy. You see how that's gonna work? You see how that is a, the communism is just a flawed system? You always gotta have people that do better. Now, you don't want a rig system, which is what we got now, we got fascism. You got the government pardoning, partnering with the corporations. You know, back during COVID, they, they worked together to put all the small businesses out of business and kept the corporations open. Remember your local Walmart? You could go down and, and go shopping at Walmart, but the little mom and pop store right next door had their doors locked and closed. That's by design. They want to put the small business and help the, that's called fascism. Okay, when the government and the corporations, and of course, remember when the government had taken over Twitter? Okay, we got the Twitter files to prove it, you know, and uh, for, for propaganda reasons, the CIA and uh, the FBI were running everything that we all got to see. It's huge. And, and that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, was how right-wing radio is also propaganda. You know, they, they sit there and they criticize these kids that are protesting at the colleges. Well, that's called free speech. <laughs> what the hell? So they say they're for free speech, but then they say, well, these kids need to be arrested for protesting for a Palestine. Now, is Hamas a terrorist organization? That's questionable. There's two different facets to Hamas. You've got the political arm and you've got the, uh, the, the military. Okay, well, guess what? We have a political arm and we got a military. <laughs> so, so, you know, when you're caged up in an open air prison for 20 years, what do you think is going to happen? You know, I, that was a brilliant military uh, operation that the Hamas pulled off. 
out of their prison. Reminded me of Escape from New York. Did you ever see that movie? That, that, that's exactly what Gaza is. If you look at the New York, if you watch that movie, that's exactly, and they broke out and, and, and fought the man, Israel. So anyway, now, did some things happen? I, I haven't seen much proof about rapes and beheading babies and all of that stuff. Did it happen? I don't know. I mean, you, you, you listen to right-wing radio, they, they tell you that Hamas is pure evil. I will tell you this, the military operation aspect of it was amazing. They went and they hit those Israeli military bases and they took a lot of prisoners from, mostly they were going for military prisoners. And of course, they, they in the, you know, in the heat of the moment, I think some civilians got trapped in it. And then of course, Israel doesn't even care about the, <laughs> they got their, what's it called? The Hannibal Doctrine or whatever it is. They don't care if they're, uh, these uh, uh, hostages die. They, and, well, they shot three of them themselves. <laughs> I mean, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, you know, three of the hostages were approaching the Israelis and uh, they had the white flag and their shirts off to show they weren't, you know, have, didn't have bombs strapped to them. And the Israeli soldiers just shot them down, man. <laughs> so, so don't tell me Israel gives a shit about their hostages. They couldn't care less. They just want dead Palestinians. All right, we'll get on the next topic here in just a few. I'm enjoying the day. Check this out. I'll show you where I'm at. I'm at Sunny Hill. Look at that, huh? Isn't that amazing? Here's the, here's the tower right there. I'll hit that on the way out. And then this is the view. I'm gonna tell you, if you're a bird watcher, this is where you wanna be. We got the birds. Now luckily, there's gators in here too, a lot of gators. But one day, I'll tell you, I was uh, walking right along here and the gator was right on the path. So what I was saying there was, it was right on this path right over here. We're, we're taking a detour down into the woods here at uh, Sunny Hill. But the gator was sunning himself like right up in here. And he was strapped across that road. Now you can see there's a swamp to either side of that road. So to get past that gator, <laughs> it was pretty damn scary. He was a big sucker too, man. Those things can move 30 miles an hour. I had to come within about, because I, I got as far as I could without stepping down into the swamp, you know, from him. And I worked my way around him and, you know, I had my walking sticks. I, I had this and I was doing a, you know, hit him with the, <laughs> poke him in the eye with the walking stick if he came after me. But he just sat there and uh, had his mouth open. I guess he was asleep, thank God. But uh, anyway, this is uh, Sunny Hill. We're going to continue on along. The, uh, the next topic I wanted to, to hit was, you know, I always try to benefit you in some way, shape or fashion. It's not geopolitical. So one project that I entered into recently was, uh, you know, if you've got a driveway, you've got those uh, cement cracks that they, they cut in there. They're called expansion joints, okay? And uh, I don't know about your, your house, but here in Florida, those are weed factories. I get nothing but weeds, and I'm constantly out there having to power wash the, those cracks or rinse them out. And, of course, dirt and debris gets down in those cracks, makes your driveway look like crap. Now, if I... Do I care what my driveway looks like? No, <laughs> but the HOA does. So, you know, I got to take care of the damn driveway to make it look nice. And you know, I, I want it to look nice anyway. So if you go to uh, Home Depot, you can buy these huge tubes and a caulk gun. And it's called leveling cement. And I just wanted to give you this story. So uh, here I am, I'm using the caulk gun with the leveling cement. And uh, one of the things I've never thought about was you got to check the back of the tube. So four of the uh, tubes, they're $16 a piece. It ain't cheap, this leveling cement or leveling sealant. I guess I should say it's not cement. But anyway, it was uh, hugely expensive. Hold on, I got something coming. Almost got run over. <laughs> I guess he's got a few weeds on top of that vehicle, huh? Anyway, get, getting back to what I was talking about. So... If you check the back of the tube and it's damaged, uh, you know, like uh, what had happened was evidently probably dropped the box with the tubes in it and it bent the tube. And so some of these leveling cement had dried out. And so here I am trying to force the leveling cement out of the tube. And of course it backed up in the caulk gun. 
and then of course it comes out and got all over my pants my legs the driveway it was one hell of a mess then that stupid me i dragged it into the house <laughs> it leveled cement on my floor oh my god it was a disaster but what i the whole moral of the story is i mean if i checked the back of the tube and done things correctly uh, I, I eliminated a hell of a lot of maintenance. Those cracks are now all filled with level and some sealant, okay? And I'll never have to pull weeds out of those cracks or power wash them ever again. Uh, at least probably not in my lifetime. The next homeowner, you know, eventually, just like anything, that level and cement will dry up and, you know, if, you know, next time you power wash 10 years from now, it might come out of the cracks and you have to do it again. But anyway, what I want you to do is look around your house and see if there's anything that you can do to eliminate some maintenance. So what I did was I got rid of a maintenance nightmare because I had to power wash these, these cracks twice a year. Well, guess what? I don't have to do it no more. So that's two days out of my life that I just gained by working for about, it took me about five days to get the whole job done to be honest, because you know, I had to go to Home Depot, take those tubes back, argue with them that they were damaged. Uh, they, actually, they didn't give me a hard time. They just took them right back, gave me my money back. I mean, that's why I like Home Depot. They, uh, they're they pretty squared away. I imagine Lowe's is about the same. That's why these big companies have put all the, the mom and pop hardware stores out of business, except Ace Hardware. They're still hanging around. So, uh, but I, you know, maybe there's something else. You know, here's another example was I had to clean my gutters because uh, if you don't get the debris out of your gutters what will happen is all that that garbage that's in the gutters will stay in the outside of the gutters then the HOA is after you because <laughs> because you can see the outside of the gutters from the street and they say well you need to clean those gutters it does no damn good to clean your gutters if you don't clean out the inside of the gutters so you know so you're coming from the top down it's a progression so and I so now what I do is I you know of course I blow out the gutters about during the you know when the leaves are falling I'm up there about once a month blowing out the gutters and then once it's all done I power wash those gutters for the inside of the gutters and then blast it on the outside a little bit and guess what I'll never have to clean those gutters ever again if I just keep up with uh, cleaning the inside of the gutters out and power washing the inside of the gutters so once again a maintenance nightmare I'm gonna tell you it took me about a week to clean the outside of those gutters because I had to use, by the way, the uh, 30 second cleaner worked fantastic. But the problem is you can't put it in a damn cannon. I had to sit there and move a ladder all the way around the house and put it over top of bushes to get up to spray that 30 second cleaner on the gutters and then climb back down the ladder, you know, power wash that section, move the ladder another three feet, climb up the ladder, clean the gutters. Never have to do that ever again as long as I get up top and power wash the gutters. Just wanted to give you some home maintenance tips. I always try to get you get you something. So you see how I'm eliminating maintenance? You know, that's a week of my life. So now we're up to one week, uh, eight, nine, nine days. Nine days I've gathered back in my life for the next year that I don't have to worry about a damn thing. So I forgot to talk about the Iran-Israel confrontation. And, and once again, the right-wing radio hosts, oh, Iran is pure evil. Iran, Iran, they're the, they're the evil axis. They're Russia, Japan, Iran, and China. You know, we're going to take on the whole damn world. We're going we're gonna to go to war with Iran. We're going to go to war with China. We're already at war with Russia. You know, how, many, how, many, how much money do you think? We, I mean, $35 trillion in debt. How long do you think we, of course we're out of weapons. <laughs> we, we've given everything we had in our inventory to uh, Ukraine. That's why they passed that bill. Because we got to replenish our stocks, you know, we've, we, but, uh, it, which baffles me. I mean, they, why, do we, why does the government care so much about everybody else in the world, but not the American people? You ever ask yourself that question? I know I do on a regular basis. But getting back to uh, Iran, you know, Iran, if it wasn't for Israel, Kill, I mean, look at look at the past, okay? Israel has bombed. They killed the Iranian uh, scientists. They went in there. Uh, they're, they're nuclear physicists. Uh, I don't know how many of them Israel has killed. Uh, they they've uh, dropped bombs on Lebanon and Syria. Uh, you know, imagine if we're dropping bombs on Mexico or Canada. 
I mean, what, what the hell? You know, and then they faced, uh, and so what did Iran do? Well, they developed some proxies, obviously. You know, Hamas uh, is more or less a proxy of Iran. You got the, the Houthis. They, so Iran, and of course the uh, Hezbollah, so Iran had no choice. I mean, they said, well, we got to fight Israel some kind of way. Now, Iran wasn't powerful enough to take Israel on head on until recently. <laughs> I mean, that was one hell of a military operation. I don't think you understand the implications of what, what took place with that, uh, that strike on Israel. Well, you know, and by the way, I, I, you won't hear on the radio that Israel provoked it. They bombed a consulate. Imagine if the United States bombed the Russian embassy uh, in Canada, or we bombed the Russian embassy in Mexico, or hell, bombed the Israeli embassy in Mexico. You know, that's a declaration of war. So Israel declared war first on Iran. They killed two generals and 15 other people. I murdered them in a consulate building, which is against international law. You're not allowed, you're not supposed to be allowed, to bomb an embassy or a consulate. That's that's sovereign territory. But, you know, if you go, to, you ever watch the movies where the guy, he runs up, you know, and he's trying to get asylum. And if, if he can just get through the gate, I think it was, uh, might have been Jack Ryan or one of those movies. And uh, he, he had to get through the gate onto the Russian side of the embassy. Because uh, the, the, uh, the CIA and the FBI were after him or something can't remember the name of the movie and as soon as he got just crossed that little line with the gate uh, once he got in there he was in protected territory and all the all the police cars and everything that had been chasing him they all just sat outside with their lights flashing and they just looked at him and he just waved to him and he said I'm on protected territory now baby you can't come get me well that's the way it, it's supposed to work okay I mean it, uh, Julian Assange you know remember he lived in the Ecuadorian embassy which, by the way, free, free Julian Assange. All he did was report on war crimes that the United States committed. What happened to free speech? Well, it doesn't exist no more, does it? We still got political prisoners locked up for January the 6th. All they did was protest, for the most part. I mean, some of them got violent. Those people needed to go to jail. But, you know, they just put a grandma in jail because she walked into the Capitol building. Was invited in by the Capitol Police, by the way. It's on, it's on video. You know, so these are political prisoners. And we're putting up with this as a country? I don't get it. But anyway, let's talk about that operation in Gaza. It was, a, it was beautiful, beautifully done. First, they, uh, what they did was they, they sent the, uh, the rockets into Israel to, uh, to activate the Israeli uh, defense uh, network. And so, that, you know, so they hit it with a barrage of rockets. All right, then, then they brought, because that, that distracted everything. Ooh, check this out. We got a deer up here. Look at him. I'll just keep it like this. But anyway, so they, they, they sent in the barrage. Then the gliders came over the wall and, and, and in cohesion with the gliders. Boy, I tell you, I have never seen so many birds as I see today. I guess it's because it's a cloudy day. I wanted to get that one on the video. Well, we're heading for the tower. I forgot to talk about the, uh, you see, here's another bird right down here. Check him out. Holy moly. Anyway, the, uh, the Getting back to the Hamas attack on October the 7th, one of the other things that they did, check, check him out, it's moving around down there. I always wonder, you know, I mean, I'm assuming gators eat them birds, <laughs> but it seems like that to be a dangerous place to be. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the other aspect of that attack was the um, drones. I forgot to add that in. They actually launched the drones, and what the drones did is they had mapped out you know, by the way, that you remember that was an AI defense. Uh, those towers, you know, they had automatic guns up there, and uh, they were, you know, they're run from a central building. But there's nobody manning those guns, and they actually dropped uh, explosives on top of those uh, towers to take out all of the, um, the, you know, the, the guns that were on top of those towers. And so that was brilliant too, uh, you know, because that that was part of the coordinated attack. Uh, you know that took took place. So anyway, just wanted to get that bird on the video. All right, it, with, with the gliders, they also brought up the uh, ground forces and they blew some breaches. I think from both sides of the wall. Now that festival that was going on, the uh, from my understanding is 
Hamas didn't even know that festival was there. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be there. And why in the world you're holding a festival next next to the, the wall? I mean, it, it, like I said, get back to Escape from New York. Are you going to have a festival right next to a prison? <laughs> what the hell? You know, because New York was a prison. I have no idea where I'm at. Oh, well. But, uh, so... You know, and then, then they came in and they knew exactly, they had great intel, man. They knew exactly where they were going, what military places to hit. They got a lot of good information. They uh, raided the computers of the uh, Israeli uh, forces. Why do you think the Israelis were so pissed off? It's because it was a pretty damn well-engineered military operation. And they killed a, a lot of Israeli soldiers. Uh, there was a lot of heavy fighting that took place, especially, you know, after the... Uh, the, the initial shock and awe kind of uh, went over. Now, what happened at the festival? I'm going to tell you, my belief is that the Israelis killed all those people. That's my belief. Now, I, I'm probably wrong, but I mean, when you look at the vehicles, the pictures I've seen, there were bullets from above. That means that the helicopter, according to the story, the helicopter gunships unloaded on those vehicles from above because they weren't sure which vehicles held Hamas and which vehicles held civilians and with the Hannibal Doctrine they don't care about civilian casualties even if it's their own people you understand that right that's the Israeli doctrine so in order to get the Hamas soldiers well they thought they were getting the Hamas soldiers they just killed all them kids man and uh, that's my understanding you know but I, I know that and, and, and by the way so then people say well they shot them from the gliders those gliders are not even in the air more than 20 minutes man you, you th and plus, those were heavy bullets. I mean, those were 50 cows. You think them gliders had 50 cows mounted on them? <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Do you know anything about the military? I mean, you know, the, the, when you look at those cars, they were shredded, man. Those were those were big guns. Uh, some of them were blown to smithereens. Those were rockets. How much ammunition do you think those gliders were carrying? <laughs> so anyway, I mean, uh, so that's why I tend to believe the story that uh, the Israelis blew up that festival. Well, it just occurred to me I didn't finish off the Iranian attack. So what it did was they sent in, uh, well, it was a little over 300 drones. These are low fly, I mean, slow flying drones. They notified uh, pretty much everybody that they were launching. They gave the uh, U.S., uh, French, uh, I think uh, Great Britain was there and Israel, plenty of time to uh, to unload on those drones. But it was brilliant. Those drones cost maybe $10,000 a piece. And we burnt one billion dollars <laughs> shooting them all down. Well, then they followed up the drones with some uh, some missile strikes. Now, my understanding is these these were the uh, hypersonics. Uh, not even the not even the good stuff. I mean, Iran used a lot of their old stuff, and they uh, they supposedly and according to everything I've seen, if you watch uh, Scott Ritter on YouTube or some of the other YouTubers, uh, five of those missiles struck. Uh, a couple of targets. They struck the air base where the planes were launched from that uh, blew up the consulate in uh, Syria. And then they also hit a, an Israeli uh, command post uh, that was used to guide that operation. Uh, and then I think they hit one other target, which was uh, not too far from the Israeli uh, nuclear weapons. So basically what Iran was saying is, and by the way, those are the most heavily defended areas in the world. And uh, what Iran was saying was, hey, we can reach out and hit you if we want to, you know. So that's that's a huge, huge statement. And, uh, of course, then Israel, you know, turned around and, and whacked Iran again. And uh, from what I understand, they didn't do too much damage. Uh, you got Escobar. He's saying that they were going to do a nuclear strike. Uh, but Scott Ritter gave a pretty heavy argument against the fact that that's uh, false information. Um, although I wouldn't put it past Israel. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think they're capable of anything, man. Uh, you know, they, they, they definitely want a regional war in the Middle East. Uh, I guess they, they just, they, they hate Arabs and they want them all dead. But uh, I don't think they're going to be able to kill them all. I think the Arabs outnumber them just by a few billion. Just thought I'd give you the view of what I'm enjoying here today. Boy, I tell you, it's like 75 degrees or so. <laughs> I love Florida. Uh, especially this time of the year. So I, rather than get my ugly mug on the video, I just thought I'd uh, let you enjoy the hike with me while we talk about things. So here I am listening to Sean Hannity. 
And uh, he's going on and on about how they need to shut these kids up on college campuses for protesting. You know, that they're anti-Semitic. Well, if they're anti-Semitic, I would say, yeah, okay, if they're, if they're saying kill the Jews, uh, that's probably not a good idea. But from what I understand, they're mostly saying free Palestine. Uh, I think that up in Dearborn, they did say death to America. <laughs> that's not a good thing. But it's called free speech. You know, I, I'm, I'm all for the kids being able to say what they want. Uh, I don't want them, you know, and any anti-Semitic stuff. But if they, they're just for free, free in Palestine or, uh, you know, quit, quit the killing, stop the war. We want a ceasefire. These are all things that I can... I'd join with them. I'd say, yeah, we need a ceasefire. We need a two-state solution, but the Israelis aren't going to go along with that. Uh, you know, because imagine, you know, you, you got, if you ever look back in history, the Palestinians were there before the Israelis. It was after World War II that the, uh, the Allies went in and moved the Palestinians out of the way and uh, created the Israeli nation. And, uh, and they didn't provide... You know, a place for the Palestinians. I mean, it was designed to be a two-state solution. You were going to have two countries, you know, Israel and uh, Palestine. But the uh, the Israelis, the Zionists, didn't want that. They wanted everything for themselves. In fact, right now, my understanding is they're actually looking to uh, develop uh, some of the places that they've blown up in Gaza. So the Israelis aren't planning to give that land back to the Palestinians. So I think that's pretty sad. Uh, so the Palestinians literally have no home. They have no place to go. I mean, they're down in the Rafah, which uh, Israel has said they're going to attack. That'll be another d million dead Palestinians. You know, what b blows my mind is that the Arab nations, they're not doing anything about it. You know, you'd think that Turkey, actually, that's not quite true. Turkey has got a flotilla that's going to be hidden down for with uh, humanitarian aid for the people in the, you know, the southern part of Gaza there where the Israelis have herded a million, 1.2 million people that a lot of them are starving to death. I know that a lot of kids are dying. Uh, so, because they have, haven't been able to, the Israelis haven't allowed, and by the way, did, did you ever watch that convoy when the Israelis went in and blew up a whole convoy from the UN? Uh, man, that was, that was a hell of an event, wasn't it? I couldn't believe, and they knew. I mean, everybody said, "Oh, it was a mistake. It was John Hannity. It was, it was it's the heat of war." That convoy was nowhere near a Hamas soldier. They knew that that was a UN mission to bring humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza, and they just didn't want it to happen. And so they made an example. What's, what's it called? The the kitchen? I can't remember the organization, the NGO that was funding that. It was out of the UN, and they just wiped them out, man killed them all shot the, and and by the way they, they tried to get away and they, they they hit those cars three times so you know that israel just didn't want that humanitarian aid going in that's why i'm like scott ritter man these zionists have got to go just wanted to get a clip of the hike here so we just came from down there now i'm going to go down here a ways this is this is usually underwater it's a swamp yeah, but there uh, were some turtles and let's see if we can get some turtles on the video. So no turtles today, but at least we got a bird there Check him out But this is the view. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna turn around I would I would yep, I'm pretty sure I could probably get all the way across but the problem is I got shorts on and in this grass You know here in Florida, you know, you can't see the snakes and uh, You know if you some of the snakes here are pretty damn poisonous and so I, I don't like hiking in the deep grass uh, unless I've got uh, my ankle. I, I actually, you can buy them. They're called snake guards. And uh, you can put them on your legs. And then you could hike through something like this without worry of a snake striking. You can order them on uh, Amazon. Uh, just look up snake guards for your legs if you ever want to go out and do a hike through some deep grass like this. Pretty cool view, huh? No, this is supposed to be a geopolitical video, but... This is a view from the tower, and here's another bird over here. See, see the birds? Man, great day for looking at the birds, but I thought you'd want to get a view of the entire area from this tower. Pretty cool, huh? Just wanted a brief clip. I always wish I could get a kayak or a canoe over into there. I bet the fishing would be outstanding. Probably never been fished. 
you know, but how in the world would you get it through the swamp to get it over there? That would be cool. Or even back in here. Oh man, we can dream, right? We can dream. Well, I won't be going back this way, but check him out, man. There's a gator right there. See him? Well, I guess I will go this way. He, he got out of the way. That's cool, wasn't it? Just a bizarre day. <laughs> man, we saw birds, deer, gators. I uh, didn't get the turtles, but uh, just about. And then on the way here, something unprecedented happened to me. I don't know what's going on today. I, I, I'm, I'm having too good a day. I didn't catch a single stoplight. Have you ever been on a long journey where you go through about, well, there's a turtle. I'll be damned. <laughs> I didn't get him on the video. He went underneath the water. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'll, uh, turtles now? Holy moly. Not a single stoplight on, on the way here. I, I, I don't, I, 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 that's never happened to me. Not, not that I can recall. And these are long stoplights, too. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about labels. They always call Hamas a terrorist group. Well, that was a brilliant military operation. So why can't you call them an army, the Hamas army? Uh, if they did uh, torture women or, uh, or cut the heads off of babies, which I told you I've seen nothing to that effect, uh, then I guess that's pretty bad. And look at what the Russians did in World War II. Uh, I think they raped about every uh, German woman in all of Berlin. But uh, those things happen. But, you know, one of the things that I always label, and of course, it's Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. Now, what does Ukraine have to do with the United States? Imagine if we are, Russia armed Mexico to the teeth. Okay, I just want you to picture this scenario. So we've been, Russia was giving javelins to Mexico. And, and so finally, uh, you know, and then Mexico built up to a 500,000 man army trained by Russia. Now... In the United States, wouldn't you see that as a little teeny bit of a threat? Especially if uh, Mexico was full of Nazis. So, uh, you know, that hate, hate the people of the United States. And Russia's giving them weapons out the wazoo. Trained up 500,000 of them and they're right on your border. How is that not a threat? So whenever I hear this, and then of course, what in the world? Why is and, and if Russia sent billions, two hundred billion dollars to Mexico, what do you think the reason they do that for? Well, if it, what Mexicans want to die fighting in the United States, uh, I guess it's a it'd be a good investment uh, if you hate the uh, hate the people of the United States, uh, or if you just hate Russians. <clears throat> I think that money would have been a whole lot better spent on helping American people. Maybe getting some homeless off the streets, maybe uh, some more food banks, uh, maybe teaching people how to grow a garden. Don't you? What's Ukraine got to do with the United States? That's it for this video. Just had to talk about what a weird day it's been. Deer, gators, turtles, birds, you name it, we saw it. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.